All right, so we're going to create a Kubernetes cluster. We're going to need some hardware. Because we've chosen to use KVM, I'm just going to draw out a quick diagram of what we're thinking, what our plan is, so then we can get into it and dig into it. What first we're going to visualize here is the outside world, outside requests out that are that come in from outside of our um, Kubernetes cluster. So these outside requests are going to hit a, a load balancer. So it can be a single load balancer or it could be a highly available load balancer. We're going to go with the highly available. So this is our load balancer group. And these load balancers are going to load balance across our Kubernetes cluster. The next thing we're going to hit is our control plane. And we're going to draw our control plane a little bit funny, and you're going to see why in a second. So our control plane is going to exist from these of three nodes. And then included in our control plane is our etcd cluster. These three nodes here just provide etcd. Uh, well, I forgot how to spell etcd here. The E is really hard. So etcd and control plane. All right. So I'm going to draw a dotted line. The etcd cluster is kind of part of our control plane, um, but it's not really available directly to the load balancers or doesn't need to be and probably shouldn't be available to it. These nodes run your API server, the scheduler, all the Kubernetes brains exist here. And really the API server API server is the only thing that talks to etcd. Actually, let's use let's use red for communication. The API server is the only thing that talks back to the etcd cluster. And the etcd cluster can all communicate. It runs as a raft protocol. All right. So, and here we have load balancer communication. Yeah, you know, it, it could be coming from any one of these. All right, so now after all that, we have our worker C here. Um, in our cluster, we're only going to create two, but you can create as many as you want. Well, up to 5,000. And these are going to be our worker nodes. So here is the minimal viable number of machines to produce what we're going to produce. You have your three load balancers, three control plane, three etcd, and two workers, bringing us up to a total of 11 machines. So let's get into making these 11 machines. All right, so this is Kelsey Hightower's Kubernetes, the hard way repository. I highly recommend you come and check it out. All of my work is based off of this. And again, the only changes from this repository is that we'll be doing ours in KVM and not the Kubernetes or Google Cloud Compute Engine. Um, all the components here are going to be the exact same, the exact same versions exact same everything and i'll make sure to bring up links to this as appropriate all right as ours is based off of kvm let's get in let's ssh into our kvm machine and we're going to use Versh for everything that we do with kvm we're going to do a list here and list out what's currently on my mach kvm machine these are the boxes. The two dev box is my dev box that I'll be using for all of the stuff that's outside of the Kubernetes repository. This is just a very basic leap, um, open SUSE leap box that um, I installed all the tools from a bare bones. Um, and this is the box we're going to use to generate certs and stuff like that. You'll also notice that we have an etcd box here. This etcd box is the initial node that we're going to use to clone for all the others. It is also a base um, leap box as well. 
the next thing we can look at is our networks. You'll notice the K8S network is our actual network. And we can pull up the config file for that here. Um, this is important. We'll see it filled out. But the main important thing here is to notice that it's an open network. Um, this is because my router is going to has a static link to this. Um, and then it, we have the domain of example.com and here the MAC address of the etcd zero box and its IP address and host name. So this would be etcd zero dot example dot com. And if you have your DNS set up right, you'll be able to access it that way. So this is our network. Um, the important things is the IP address of the load balancers and control planes, etcd, and the workers. These are important to remember when making certs and when setting up your control plane. And that's pretty much it. Other than that, uh, there's not a whole lot to see here. It's good for reference. All right, so moving on, you'll notice that in Kelsey Hightowers, there's a static IP address. We don't really need to worry about a public static IP address right now. That would be your link to the outside world. Because of that, we can kind of move on to initializing the compute resources. Uh, now, this is the graphical interface that I'm using to interface with KVM. You could also do this through the command line. Either way is completely fine. Now, what I have done is I have created this base box. And this base box is just a base um, OpenSUSE leap box with some SSH keys and whatnot, um, this, a user setup and everything. And we're going to use this and we're going to clone it for all of our other things so that we don't have to do all that base work over again. It's just kind of a nice little thing that we're going to be able to do. So what you want to do is make sure that you update the um, the disk, the QCOW, so that it it's a nice name. It's just going to tack on clone on the end of it, and that's not very nice. So once you do that, you can go ahead and just clone it as, as long as its names are all up to date. And you can pump out a lot of these very quickly. I'm not going to bore us and watch make us watch all of these. I, I did some in fast forward here, um, and this is just making all the ones that we need. These are going to be all the different nodes of our Kubernetes cluster. So we need the load balancer, the three control plane, three etcd, as well as our two worker nodes. These are all based off of the same JiroS OpenSUSE leap image. and here we have the completed work so if i had shown making every single one of them you'll notice here the um the control planes the etcd the load balancers we're only using one load balancer not three and our two workers here is our completed network. So I told you that we would have to go and fill this out. So let's open up the K8S network. And I filled all of these out. So for every reference, you notice that there is its MAC address, the, the name, the DNS name, as well as its IP address that we want it to have. And this is why that diagram of our network is important so we can keep it all straight. All right, so now that we have that, we can also show you this is my unbound DNS server with all the records. You could run any DNS server that you'd like. I'm using unbound on a um, Raspberry Pi for my DNS. And this DNS allows me to access them anywhere on my network. And you can notice that I have them matching the right, the KVM network's IP address so that we can route to them anywhere on our network. All right, and that concludes all of the networking and KVM guest machine setup. So now that we have our nodes, we can go ahead and dig into creating all the certs that we're going to need to support the control plane on these nodes.